Greetings, greetings to the 12 tribes of Yasharala. I am back with another video. And in this video, um, I'm going to share a few dreams that I had and then share what I what the most high um is giving me to share with with his people. So, um, <clears throat> all right. So I'm, I, I kind of wrote this down. Well, no, I woke up from the dream and I just grabbed my phone and started, um, inserting or typing what I remember from the dream. But in the dream, I went into a grocery store and the freezer and shelves were low. So I remember looking around in the grocery store and food looked scarce. There was still food on the shelves. Um, and in the freezer section, but they were low, you know, like some videos showing them pulling food items up to the front and not having them stopped in the back. Um, you know, that was apparent. So I woke up in the middle of the night to use the restroom. And when I went back to sleep, the dream continued um, where it left off. So I went back in the store and I heard someone saying, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And then I looked around and I noticed that the freezers and shelves were completely bare. The store manager was walking around frantic and I approached him and asked, sir, are there any trucks scheduled to bring food back um, to the stores to stock the shelves? And he didn't open his mouth, but he shook his head, no. So this immediately made me think of the scripture that says and power was given to him to to him to wear out the saints okay um in the book of revelations this is a part of wearing out the saints um a, a food shortage or food being withheld and then um there are records of them um, having discussions where they've said if they withhold food or shut down the food supply for nine months, how many millions of people will die? How many millions of deaths will take place by withholding food for nine months? So also, um, <clears throat> if we think about, oh, okay, so um, let me just play this and then I'll discuss it. Expression, out of everything terrible, something will work hard enough for it. I think this presents us with some significant opportunities to make some real changes. You know, we are at an inflection point, I believe, in the world economy, not just the world economy, in the world. It occurs every three or four generations. As one of them, as the uh, one of the top military people said to me in a secure meeting the other day, 60, 60 million people died between 1900 and 1946, and uh, since then we established a liberal world order, and that hadn't happened in a long while. A lot of people died, but nowhere near the chaos. And now is a time when things are shifting. We're going to there's going to be a new world order out there, and we've got to lead it. We've got to unite the rest of the free world in doing it. So anyway, I'm going to hush up, Mary, fire away. So we just heard um, We just heard Biden say that 
we are in the process of a new world order and America will lead it. And he also mentioned that every four to five decades that there's time um, to change the world order. He mentioned the liberal world order. So back um, in from 1939 to the mid forties, um, during the time that we had World War II, World War II led the liberal world order. So after, but there were some factors that took place prior to World War II. You had World War II, you had the Great Depression, you had um, polio outbreaks, you had smallpox, so you had famine, um, recession and depression, and then war. These were the elements used to bring forth the liberal world order. What was a part of the liberal world order? The liberal world order was, there were so many men out in serving in, the, in World War II and women did not work at that time you had so many um men serving in world war ii that they came up with um someone called rosie the riveter let me see if i can pull up that image rosie the riveter was an image that and you can Google this with the Library of Congress. Congress, this was an image that promoted women to get out and work, promoted women to um, riveter is something that holds, you know, something together. And so there, the plot was to tell women. We need you to hold this country together. We need you to keep this economy going, although all of the men are out serving in the war. And it does not take away from, from your femininity if you have to work at a factory or whatnot. And so let me show you this image. This image of Rosie the Riveter, and it said, you can do it. This is what was come out with, see right here it says during World War II, six million women entered the workforce. Six million women entered the workforce during World War II. And this um, picture here was a part of the campaign to get women out to work. So that brought in the liberal world order. What also came with that liberal world order was now that women are in the workforce, women don't need a man. Women can do everything that a man can do. Women can fight to be equal to a man. So this is also what came along with that liberal world order. Now you have the feminine movement, a whole movement coming from this one action and this was strategic because this liberal this is what we're in now and this was the fall of the family and the family unit and this was the fall or the dissemination of this country and supposedly what it was um supposed to have stood for that was told to us although we know that that was based on a falsehood so war you had world war ii you had they were just coming out of the great depression and then you had so you had depression and recession and you had um and and you had famine so these were um, the components used. You had sickness. So what happened in 
2021, they started talking about a great reset, a great reset. But then we had an illness that came out the blue, a cough that everyone needed to take an injection for. So um, that was the famine that came. Now you have the war that's going on between Russia and Ukraine that America is behind and funding billions of dollars into. And then you have the war between Hamas and Israel that once again, America is backing and um, funneling money into. So we, we are at war. We are active participants in both wars that are currently going on. All right, so we have the war. We have the depression or recession. This is the Business Insider showing that more than 2,800 stores across the U.S. are closing in 2023. And this is just to name a few. Bath and Body Work, I'm sorry, Bed Bath and Beyond closing 896 locations. Foot Locker, 545. Tuesday morning, 487. CVS, 300 stores. Rite Aid, 154 stores. And I can go on and on about, a matter of fact, this is Money Wise. Money Wise. This name's different ones. This name's um, Christopher and Banks. 449 stores, Family Video, 250 stores, Starbucks, 500 stores. So this is what we're not seeing or, or what's not being discussed on the news, all right? And so like I was saying, in order for us to move from this liberal world order, we're moving to a new world order. What does it look like? One world currency, one world religion, one world government. This goes all the way back to the Tower of Babel. This is what was going on during that time. The Most High had allotted each, each family, each nation of the 70 nations, a part, an allotment of land and told them to scatter told them to go out they refused to if you go further in depth of it Nimrod did not want to go out Nimrod had anger towards the most high for flood in the world and so they wanted to stay together and they wanted to stay hot on the mountain in case the most high ever flooded the world again um they would be on high ground so that's when he scattered the languages and forced them to move out <clears throat> and so since they moved, since those nations were scattered, they have been on a mission to come back together and reunite as they did in these United States where a plethora of, it doesn't matter your nationality, it does not matter your religion, it does not matter your preference, um, a family structure it you know to a two father household a two woman household you can marry your dog if you want to um anything goes anything goes and it's all together that was the premise of found the foundation of this nation and and this nation um, this Hollywood and uh, media, this whore, 
has fornicated with every nation, every nation, it appeals to every nation. Everyone wants to move here because supposedly it's the land of opportunity and wealth and everything else that is known for, but it is perverting the world through, you know, through television um, or tell lie vision. Um, and so this, this, this nation, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's Babylon. It's a modern day mystery Babylon, as the Bible said, because it, it, it is not openly named Babylon, but everything pertaining to Babylon and the worship of the deities and um and everything that took place it it goes on here but it goes on under a premise of righteousness when it's wicked to the core so this is a time for if you have not begin to stock up Please, I made several videos over the last few years about stocking up. Please get what you can to preserve yourself and your family. Also, make sure that you stock up on supplements. One thing that we're not told is that during World War I, there were so many millions of deaths, but there were actually millions of deaths that was from malnutrition than from the actual war many of our more soldiers in the war died from malnutrition because they were eating processed foods that's when they um came out with canned foods packaged foods and all this processed food so they died from malnutrition from the diet of processed foods and not getting the vitamins and nutrients that their bodies needed over the death rate of the actual war. I want to show you all. Um, now, you have to be mindful of what's going on with the food. Um, I'm going to play this video here. Speaking of seedless and modified produce earlier today, have you guys seen what's happening with the watermelons at Walmart, for instance? Like what is going on with these GMO watermelons? So I got this watermelon yesterday, set it on the counter and come down this morning to it exploding. This foam out of it, you can see it's constantly bubbling pretty disgusting. I don't know what I say. Don't texture that watermelon. This is not a freaking watermelon. Look at this. It has texture like meat. Do y'all see this? Walmart watermelons exploding everywhere. downstairs and all of the guts of my watermelon was all over my table as you can see here so I guess overnight my watermelon exploded combusted and I'm not sure why um, so here it is again the inside looks crazy it really looks like it is a man-made watermelon it doesn't look like a natural intricately grown watermelon um, however I'm just baffled and I'm not really sure 
if I want to eat watermelons ever again. What the actual FCK is going on with our watermelon? Hank Green. It smells so bad. I cannot make this up. I heard a whistling sound in the pantry, and then my watermelon exploded like a... Eating GMO food. Second war of money from Kroger that's been doing this. I got to a From Kroger. Did you see that? Bro, it's got pressure behind it. What in the world? And that's not the only one. There's a bunch in here. They all fill. This one's weak. I can put my finger through it, y'all. Did y'all see that? It's not just this one, though. They're, they're all, they all got pressure built up in them. Did you see that? Oh, man, there's pressure in there. This ain't normal. Yo. I'm telling y'all, don't buy the watermelon from Walmart. GMO products, don't do it. And then I have another one. What do you know or what have you heard about fake eggs? There's rumors that these fake eggs are starting to hit the market, even in major retail stores. I can't confirm any of this to be actually true, but it's said that they're coming out of China. What's happening to our food supply? Check out these clips I gathered. Walmart, Walmart eggs are made eggs of plastic. Is made out of fucking plastic. Glue or some shit. I just think I'm gonna make some breakfast. It says fucking plastic. The whole top part is plastic. All this is plastic. I just cook the fucking egg. It's plastic. Keep watching. Only real is this yellow shit. Even the bottom, this shit plastic. This shit fucking plastic. Look at this shit. This, this shit is plastic. There is something up with the eggs. It goes well beyond just the feed and the yolk being on the outside. Something is up with the eggs. This woman boiled them and they came out this deformed with the internal yolk that's rubbery instead of pasty. Look at this crap. Are those rubber eggs, honestly? Can you believe that? It's so gross. And these are from Eggland, okay? Has this ever happened to anybody? Where are you? 
All right, so that's just another video about um the eggs and our food supply. Um I don't know if y'all are aware this is CNN business that um June 21, 2023, this was reported um that lab made lab grown meat was cleared for sale in the US. Lab grown meat was cleared for sale in the US. I actually had a video of a person getting their um food from Zaxby's. And they were showing, um, they tore into their chicken tender and was showing that where it was um, fake. All right. So let's look at this. So Good Meat, Upside Foods and Good Meats are two of the companies that, that what they call cultivated chicken. Okay, all of this good. You see um, the good products they have, the avocado, um, I mean, the guacamole. I'm going to say it's someone, G-A-T-E-S, um, owns these companies just like they have purchased um, hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland or, and are the number one um holder of farmland and their groceries are going into the stores as well as they supply McDonald's with their potatoes and um, their carrots, their lettuce, uh, tomatoes. It comes from G-A-T-E-S farm land. That's where a lot of our food going into the grocery stores now is coming from. He is also part holder of Beyond and Impossible Meats. Beyond Meats and Impossible Meat, this plant-based stuff, he has invested highly in synthetic meat. Now we're going to talk about HeLa cells. HeLa cells, um, and it says here, the legacy of Henrietta Lacks. Henrietta Lacks was an African-American so-called um, she was a Yashara like uh, um, from the tribe of Judah. She, in the fifties, was um, dying of cancer. She was um, her and her family had limited funds. John Hopkins offered to give her cancer treatment for free, but what they did not tell her was that she would also be consenting to kind of be a guinea pig, they were using her as cancer research. One of the things that they found out when they were testing her cancer cells and they put those cells in a culture is that within three days, when they went back to check the culture every day, um, more and more cancer cells should die um, being isolated in a culture. But what they what they realized is that every day that they checked Henrietta Lacks cancer cells, they were replicating, they were multiplying, they were getting vast in number. And so they began to research her cells. Okay. Right now, today, they are still using her cells. And anyone that will, any um organization that wants some of her cells can get some and her cells have been used in medicine and food and i'm gonna tell you her cells are one of the bases henrietta lacks that's why they call it Hela. the h-e the first two letters of her first and last name the h-e for henrietta the law for lacks so um let me just read here. Okay. Among, among the important scientific discoveries of the last century was the first immortal human cell line known as HeLa, a remarkable, durable, and prolific line of cells obtained during the treatment of Henrietta's cancer by John Hopkins researcher, Dr. Greg Gray or Gay 
in 1951. Although these were the first cells that could be easily shared and multiplied in a lab setting, John Hopkins never sold nor profited from the discovery or distribution of the HeLa cells and does not own the rights to the HeLa cell line. Rather, John Hopkins offered HeLa cells freely and widely for scientific research. That's what I just told you. They're not selling them, but anyone who wants to get them can have some. Um, over the past several decades, this cell line has contributed to many medical breakthroughs from research on the effects of zero gravity in outer space and the development of polio and C-19 vaccines to the study of leukemia and AIDS virus and cancer worldwide. Although many other cell lines are used today, HeLa cells have supported advances in most fields of medical research in the years since HeLa cells were isolated. In the last days, Revelation 6, um, verses 1 through 7, discusses the, uh, no, verses 1 through 8, discusses the uh, four horses of the apocalypse. The world has told us what was coming. When this person here who worships Saturn, she has her Saturn earrings on, this person here that worships Saturn, who is recognized as the whore of Babylon, has showed us what was coming. She posed here with the pale horse. The pale horse represents starvation and famine. Um, I think she posed twice. Well, I have another image of her posing with the pale horse. She posed here with the black horse. Okay. Let's see. Let me just read this. Um, Revelation 6 and 1. And I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. We're going to come back to that. And when he opened the, the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And and out came another that was another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat on the throne to take away peace from the earth that they should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and behold, lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard the voice say in the midst of the four beasts, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and beheld a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed him and power was given over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So like I um, was sh showing you. All right, let me go down. This is, I'll put it, um, I'll put that scripture along with this package, this pa passage from the New World Encyclopedia about the four horsemen. Okay. So, 
we had one white, one red, one black, and one pale. So <clears throat> the red horse represents war, the pale horse, famine, death, starvation. Um, the white horse actually represents the Antichrist. All right. And um, let's. Let me just show you these images because I. So she has posed with the pale horse, the black horse. That's the pale horse again. She, like I say, represents the whore of Babylon that's discussed in Revelations. And she posed here with the red horse. So they've showed us because that's what they have to do. They have to show us what's going on. There she is again. With the, there she is with the white horse. But we're going to the white horse actually represents the Antichrist, the Antichrist coming or his reign. Um, so let's see what else I have. For whatever reason, this video won't play for me, but I will um, just link it. This was last year during the Ukraine war, and Biden said, expect food shortages due to the Ukraine war. Now, all of a sudden, this was my first time ever hearing that Russia was the number one supplier of wheat for the world. So he discussed the price of wheat and the shortage of wheat. And I just found that kind of interesting because of what that scripture says about the price of wheat or whatnot. So now let's discuss um, the white horse. It says that I saw a white horse and a rider Okay, and he was coming to con conquering and to conquer. All right, this is he who was coming to wear out the saints. So here is um the white horse was the this is the Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. This is where Obama chose to give his um speech for running for democratic nomination he chose denver he also had denver during his presidency he had this team to come to the white house and he he honored them um this was the stage in the mile high stadium they made his stage like a Greek a Greek temple. And you have the stairs here and he was there in the middle, but more so, this is what, this is what the stage mimic down to the T. And the, his picture would have been here and here. And then the steps going up and him standing there. This is called the Pergam altar. And I'll just read here that it says, citing the book of Revelation chapter two, verses 12 and 13 in the Christian Bible, many scholars have argued that the Pergam altar is known as the seat of S-A-T-A-N mentioned by John the Apostle in his letter to the church of Pergamon. So it's very interesting that they chose that particular stadium and they chose to decorate or design the stadium as what is known as the seats of S-A-T-A-N or the seats of 
Z E U S. Or is it Z U E S? I'm sorry. All right. Um, he, what a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, he showed us, um, who he was when he changed his name from Barry Satoro to Barack Obama. Barack means lightning. Obama means from heaven or high place. And it goes to the scripture where Christ said, I, I saw Satan fall from heaven, heaven as lightning. That's what he changed his name to, lightning from heaven. And he came showing who he was. <clears throat> All right, this is a real image that I want to share with you all that was taken um, at the White House during his presidency. He has always showed who he was. And I'm, I, I have a whole nother video. I made a few videos prior to me even coming into the truth about who I was. This is a real video. Now, he, I mean, this is a real image. He said that this was in honor of Game of Thrones. That's the, that Game of Thrones was his favorite TV show and he followed it. But he's sitting in this chair and this um mockery of of one of the seats of the king of game of thrones he's sitting there with a crown in his lap and he has a boat on the table and this is not um this image is not fake or you know um this was a real image that was released from the white house so it said that he came and there was a white horse and he had a crown and a, a, a bow was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And think about it. The Bible said that the Antichrist would change the most highest laws and times. And what did he come in pushing? And what did he ultimately make sure he changed before he left? Same sex marriage. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and um, end this video. I pray that you all have a blessed day and um, I pray that you prepare. I pray that the Most High covers your household. I pray um, that you are blessed with abundance. Um, I pray that you have the well with all and the strength to endure what is coming upon the earth. And I'm going to also attach a video um, that I did not play, but about three days ago, I was driving not too far from my home and I came across a railroad crossing and there was just miles, you know, it seemed like, I don't know, three, four miles of army vehicles just going across the train tracks. So I'll also post that. But anyway, you all have a blessed day and I will um, talk to you soon in the next video.